Introducing from the blue corner, weighing in at 69.6 kilos, training out of the Unite MMA gym. Under the tutelage of Brad Gawthorne, he's a on debut tonight from the Willem Bar. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Bima Rowe. <laughs> And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, weighing in at 70.5 kilos. He trains at the NTG Fighting Fitness Gym, trained by Nugget Madok. He is on debut tonight from Ipswich in Queensland. This is Ram Dang! <laughs> and when the action begins, our referee, Phil Cassidy. First assignment for Phil Cassidy, our man in the middle this evening. Rao fighting out of the blue corner. Deng fighting out of the red corner. Look at the size of right, Deng. Fire ready. T. Fire I mean, ready. it's, it's Jalen Turner-esque. I mean, he's almost touching the top of the cage here at lightweight, 70.5 kilograms. And straight to the center, of Blake. And a good option for Beamer Rao as he shoots deeper. Look at those hips. Too smooth, too slick is Rain Dang. Yeah, he's getting it straight underway. I mean, it's no secret what each gentleman's game plan is going to be. Beamer trying to close the distance and, and pressure for that takedown there. But uh, as you mentioned, Deng very good with the takedown defense thus far. Incredible defense from Deng. This eternal amateur lightweight belt made possible by our friends at proper number 12, Irish Whiskey. Oh, his hands are clasped here with Beamer. Oh, he's still on high. It's so difficult on these taller opponents to to lock those hands and not scoot up the back. It's heck of a challenge, but Beamer is not, not seeming deterred. Beautiful, that's high level training there from Beamer. Down goes Deng, one for one in takedowns for Rao now. This is where you'd want to keep a man who has a 20 centimeter reach advantage over you, a reach advantage nullified by the grappling and pressure of Beamer Rao. He's done a great job as Deng building his base straight back up. He's fighting for underhooks here. And it's exhausting for both men, but especially Beamer, who's here on the offense, you know. It's, it's taxing, but he doesn't look from the, from the IQ that he's showing in the grappling. It doesn't seem like he's, uh, he's afraid of chaining things together. New Zealand-born Beamer Rao. Looking for his first victory as a debutante. And we talk about Rand Dang, South Sudanese, born in Egypt. He now calls Ipswich home. You know they can throw hands at those boys out there in the 4-3. He's having a hard time doing it right now, courtesy of Rao. But if he can separate and create some distance, no doubt Nugget McNaught and the team at NTG Fight and Fitness will be imploring him to let those hands go as he manages to land a few annoying shots behind the ear on B. Morale. But I'm sure that they were prepared for this. You know, uh, their opponent coming in, they knew he was a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu purple belt. They knew that they had the huge reach advantage and size advantage. So, and you can see from his defense here, he's he's been prepared for this. He's staying calm, he's staying collected, being heavy, fighting for underhooks. Here he's turning off. Beamer is on him like... Like flies on honey, I tell you now, T, he's not being deterred at all. Well, this will be very familiar to you in the uh, training room of Scrappy MMA, wouldn't it, Jack Becker? When he decides to get going, no doubt you've been in this position before, haven't you, Blake? Well, I tell you what, I've never stayed on my feet as long as Rand Dang has in, in, in that training room, but there he goes down there. He's down again, second time in round one. Of the UFC as they dive into the UFC Fight Pass archives and provide comedic commentary. Live and exclusive on UFC Fight Pass. Make sure you sign up once again to see Dave Martinez take on Kieran Joblin here in our main event of Eternal 77. Oh, head kick for Deng Lands. He's heavy with these kicks to start off with round two. You can see an adjustment in the aggression now from Deng. But in goes Beamer again. He's on those hips against the cage and we find ourselves in the same position. Well, as you said, Blake Richardson, Rand Dang credits his incredible takedown defense as a major factor in determining the outcome of this fight. 
He's gone down twice in the first round, but to be honest, Bima Rao didn't do much while he kept him there. And in fact, then got back to his feet, which was impressive. But again, you have to award the constant pressure that Rao brings to Rand Deng once again in the second round. That's true, but like you said, I mean, it's it, it's taxing for Bima here. You can see the, the shots are getting a little bit more desperate outside. Uh, he's not setting them up as well. Um, so it, it's just a matter, it's a battle of attrition between these two men. Who is going to be able to keep this pace? And will they be able to separate and, and Deng to let the hands go? Or will Bima finally find his way into a dominant position to secure a submission? Just pick those shots. Phil Cassidy making sure that we don't see any more shots to the back of the head as we oh, saw nice in our turn previous off by Deng. Sorry to cut you off, Blake. Go ahead. Oh, no, it's absolutely fine. <laughs> Bit of a contrast from what we saw between Bruce Yang and Akira Fujimura. Oh, we can't compare to that. <laughs> you know, it's not fair to any of the fighters for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the evening to compare to uh, Yang and Fujimura. That was incredible. Nonetheless, a different skill set on display between Rao and Deng. Well, he's looking for an ankle pick here. He's trying to separate. It's hard to link the hands on someone with such, such long legs. Well, how much success do you think Rao's going to have at picking that uh, 190 well, centimetre ankle <laughs> of Rand Deng? <laughs> I don't think it's just the ankle that's 190 centimetres. I mean, that would be quite a sight. But uh, no, I know exactly what you mean. It's it's hard, hard work, this. But he's staying consistent. And, and he's nullifying most of the offense from Deng. And more to your point, Blake, this is exactly what Bima Rao should be doing against this guy of this stature because he doesn't want to eat those oh, punches. Shots there. It looks like Rand Deng's had enough. Yeah, absolutely. And he's still fresh. Oh, God, he's unloading here. Ten seconds left in this round. To the body and up high for Deng. He's looking to close out round two with a finish. Can he get it? Rao will make it out and see round three. Alan Philpott versus Sean Etchell and Eternals middleweight champion Matt Myers takes on the arm collector in his first title defense in Brogan Anderson. Tickets will be on sale soon. Back to the action here at Eternal 77. And Rose landed a nice left hand there, you know, he can't, he's, he's believing, believing a little bit more in his striking. Oh, oh, hard right hand, oh, the knee to his troubles as well, my goodness, but Rose, the muscle memory on the grappling of this man to close the distance. That knee landed flush. It's almost like he went into autopilot, and for good reason, down goes Deng again. Not a bad autopilot, but there he is building up straight away again, but he's in on those legs, his hands. Can't see from here if his hands are clasped, but... We're seeing a far more aggressive Rand Deng here in round three. He knows he needs to get to work. Philip Rao having a hard time keeping the man from NTG down on the canvas. Philip Rao, I think a Beamer Rao is the, is the man we're facing here. Did I say Philip? I think you were thinking of uh, <laughs> UFC star Philip Rao. Philip but, Rao, uh, Beam Rao, rather. My apologies. That's all right. I think uh, at the moment with the uh, how hard the fight's been, Beamer might not mind Philip jumping in for a round <laughs> against old Rand Dang. But uh, staying consistent, showing hard. He said he wouldn't quit on himself, and he hasn't. He's got to move here. This is not a good shot. Not, not a good spot to be in. This is great activity from Rand Dang, and in the eyes of the judges, Blake, you'd have to think the more active fighter may get the reward here in round three, especially when you have to think, once again, rounds one and two quite close. Absolutely. I wouldn't be want, to, want to be a judge in this one, but uh, it all depends on what they're looking for. If they're looking for damage, I mean, uh, you, you'd think they would have to lean towards Deng in this, you know. Round one, not much happened. A lot of offense from Beamer, but here we are in round three, one minute to go. And he's on the neck. Is he under the neck as well? No. The Muay Thai oh specialist trying to get his first submission. Oh, here he's at the, the Southport Sharks. He's on the side, though, no hooks. No, he's out. An audacious move, but you've got to take these risks in round three. I, 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 I applaud Randon. And he's got his back taken here. Now, Bima Morrell looking to steal some of Deng's tricks and take the back. He's got to stay high as Randon. He's trying to build up there, get his hips a bit higher than Bima, but he's doing, Bima's doing a good job of keeping him low. But he's only got 30 seconds to pull off a submission. It's not, a, not an easy thing to do, but we've seen crazy things before. 
Oh, here he is, transition to the top. Oh my goodness. Well, he's trying to pull something out of the hat here. 15 seconds left. Uh, and Rao is in full mount now to count down the final seconds of this bout. Some ground and pound for good measure to finish the round. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of furious action, we have a split decision. Your winner from the red corner, Ray 